so much, uh, Pranav, and very good morning to you, Professor Singhji. Uh, whenever I listen to such uh, topics that the role of technology in schools and universities, it's almost like asking about role of food in, the, uh, in growing up or role of food in life, because uh, that has become as important as, uh, important as food for all of us. Uh, there were times that uh, typewriter was the biggest invention those days and whenever we made presented any papers we used only the typewriter and of course our hands were the biggest tool we had those days and if you start from there till date the uh, progress has been tremendous and uh, whenever the change comes change comes like a tsunami change doesn't come like a small tide. And when the tsunami comes, we all have to go with the tsunami and the latest being uh, um, chat GPT, where we also had one discussion on this. Uh, the technology has become a very integral part of schools and universities. Now, the link between the schools and universities also started with the technology now. Uh, uh, recently, I heard from a, a, a cyber crime expert that the universities across the globe now what they are saying if they want to have a, a referral about the you know, about any candidate they are also seeing the footprints in the social media even if it is deleted it uh, deleted it is there so that is the effect of uh, technology today but in the day to day learning how is the technology taking us ahead and how we have become uh, dependent and technology and schools and educational institutions have become interdependent is what we are going to hear from very great experts in this topic and being the deans and vice chancellors of such famous universities. May I request you, sir, that how is that the role of the role of this technology in the universities and the colleges happening? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sharda, ma'am. I think uh, you have very rightly said, I'll begin from there. Good morning to everyone. Uh, that there's no doubt that technology has taken a major part of education ecosystem. I would say that before COVID, it was there, but it was limited to elite schools and elite universities and colleges. And we were experimenting a little bit about using technology in our uh, curriculum and pedagogy that we were doing. That was not from only what ma'am has said, typewriter, but later on it's been converted to DTP and that has gone to computers, then had gone to overhead projectors, then had gone to, you know, uh, PPTs through, you know, all those other devices and the classes become digital, but that also remain limited to the elites, right? I would say that because if this is the forum where I'm going to speak, I will speak uh, for all three, four categories of education system. What we have, we do not have one education system or education ecosystem in this country. We have something very elite, then we have elite, then we have uh, Keval towns and big towns, uh, infrastructure of the schools and universities, and then we have tier two and tier three cities, colleges, schools, and university, and maybe lastly to the village level and the you know grassroots level. So I think when I'm going to speak on this, I if you allow me, Sharda ma'am, so I will try not to only talk about my university, which in my opinion is sort of not elitist, but elite university situated in the city of Guwahati. And we keep on discussing about ourselves. So our journey, journey is fantastic. So leave aside that we immediately been switched to digital platform. Corona has given us opportunity to become more proficient. We also became more you know, open to learning systems around us. Zoom on which we are working now and another uh, 20, 30 more platforms have come. So that all has happened as a tsunami, as you rightly said, in our domain. But uh, how much tsunami is affecting us now? That is a topic. And how much tsunami has given benefit to us and washed us out? Both the things. I mean, it has given something very concrete and very good. But that is not only which has happened. It has also given us a lot many points, which probably in my opinion, technology should be careful with. And we should be careful with technology to imbibe in, in our in our day-to-day -day education system. So I don't know how much time, but I'm I'm trying to touch upon and Shardanam, you're free to tell me that you can, you know, put your views later on because we professors get, get a chance. We don't stop. 
so uh, you are free to stop me because you're a school principal and they are very good at stopping people including my principal when i was a student right so i don't mind that and still i'm a student i would say that and i would love to be your student so anyways so this is why my, my the my way of life ma'am so i if i say that the elitist and the elite school together we have got a lot of advantages from this technological uh, change from you know uh, from uh, face to face teaching we have gone hybrid uh, we have gone from face to face to digital this is called digital so digital hybrid all those things are in place but even if the elitist of the you know universities and schools and colleges things are subsiding technology is losing its foot i'm straight forward about it technology is losing its foot because of two three reasons the way it was there in the corona time and what we were expecting out of it that it will be 50% digital or 40% digital and swam and moocs platform and then people abroad uh, across the country and the world they will be teaching across the globe i will be teaching from sitting in guwahati to hyderabad hyderabad will be teaching guwahati nothing has happened and nothing is going to happen i am not very negative about it i am very optimistic gradually as a vice chancellor day and night i am pushing to take the advantage of digital technology and platforms and resources but our ecosystem probably is still not mature and i would say open and i would say that confident what i am talking about confidence is the teachers confidence they still are holding back their physical domain and are apprehensive in a negative sense that if the knowledge will flow from best to the mediocre and to the bottom they will lose their foot i'm sorry i'm a teacher but i'm straight forward about it teachers are trying that the digital should not become digital or hybrid or uh, digital whatever we have the advantage and in this journey students are suffering i would say that teachers we should change ourselves i tell you honestly that if the digital is there a better teacher than me if teaching my subject it should be taken positively and we should learn from their way of teaching and their way of curriculum covering and everything in place of having a fear that if somebody is teaching better than me what will happen to me nothing will happen to anyone if they are a quick and swift learners and they are open from heart and if they are still a student if they have a, a something very rigid in them and still they are living with lot of egos which normally teachers live with i think time has changed i'm very very positive about uh, a digital platform i'm very positive about hybrid hybrid will change the ecosystem of this country if teachers will accept it genuinely forget about the leaders leaders can only push but things will happen to the extent of 5 10% it will not happen to the extent of 30 40% which is expected in the ecosystem so this is about the elites one come to the tier 2 and uh, tier 3 cities and the village or grassroots ecosystem i think we have other challenges than this number one is that still uh, the teachers are uh, teaching in those uh, institutions but the quality not all i'm talking about i should not say in general but quality because of certain uh, city ecosystem and because of proximity because of low salary or maybe under employment the best of the teachers are not going and working in those places except few if it is a government institution they are highly paid they compromise and go otherwise they normally avoid going to the tier 2 and tier 3 cities and they go some of them go because of other compulsions they are the best they are better than the uh, tier 1 cities but they are very few i am talking in general so teachers please don't mind if they listen to me it is not generalized it is a case to case basis so in those situation if i say so 60 to 70% teachers in tier 2 tier 3 cities they have further apprehension and problems of connectivity network or also the facilities available for digital uh, classrooms and also other activities so even if they want they are finding it further difficult to implement so first tier 1 tier 2 is not implementing it properly tier 2 tier 3 they are not implementing and also they do not have enough right infrastructure and forget about the last grassroots level still teachers do not understand technology well 
technology is not in place, connectivity is not there. So these are the three tiers, four tiers. I've covered five into three. They have deliberately saved time. So madam, I tell you honestly, as a vice chancellor, this is my ninth year as a vice chancellor and uh, working with uh, different institutions. I mean, this is the best opportunity. Corona has given us so much pain and negativity, but it has given us something very creative. And if we use it judiciously, I'm repeating, we should not use it blind uh, eyes and blindfolded. We should be very judicious. And I tell you honestly, not even a one you know, institution in this country, I'm talking the top IITs, that they have faculty, best faculty for all the subjects. They do not have. Forget about me and you. So wherever we have gaps, wherever we don't have best faculties, where we are finding it difficult to appoint faculty, wherever the subjects are new, innovative, product design, structural design. Yesterday, I did a meeting with my dean and others. I tell, told them, to don't wait for a faculty, good faculty to join. I'll not compromise with C-grade faculty. It's better we use the platform, digital. And if digital is not possible, use and we have done mapping with SWEB and MOOCs courses. Our teachers will be mentors and the students will join the SWEB and MOOC platforms and their examination may be conducted by the university and by the MOOCs. We have so much to do, but we should have a mindset to do. We should have a, a real heart to do it. We should think India first. We should think the quality of education first. We should think about the great nation which we are trying to build first then to think about ourselves, then to think about my pain, then to think about my job, then to think about my pride, my ego. That should washed away. That should not be considered in the name of country, in the name of quality education, ma'am, to begin with. Thank you so much, sir. In fact, it was a very power-packed uh, yes. message you have given. Absolutely a power-packed one. And the message is very clear. Uh, number one, that uh, the teachers have to be empowered. Number two, uh, the facilities and demographical requirements have to be kept, kept in mind and how to empower these tier two, tier three cities. Number three, use the tool for a, in a wise manner so that uh, everybody gets the same kind of a facility. That all the three points are very well put in, sir. Gentlemen, as students of Delhi Public School, Bangla East, we, Ashriya and Melanie, are excited to announce that EduTV has started a movement for higher education for all. We are proud to inform you that corporates and Indian private universities have joined this movement by offering scholarships to eligible schools across the Indian subcontinent, Southeast Asia, Gulf countries, and Africa. These scholarships are based on merit, sports, extracurricular activities, need-based, principal's recommendation, innovation by students, girl scholars, wards of defense personnel, daughters and sons of teachers, admission aspirants from remote places, South country aspirants, students who studied in war zones, single parent, students with more than two siblings, and students whose parents are not eligible for bank loans. This is a fantastic opportunity for many students and we are thrilled to see the positive impact it will have on their education. We urge other school corporates and universities to join this movement and support higher education, education for all. Thank you. Thank you.